So we're at the very end of 2017 and Adidas ended up releasing a brand new model called the Profier. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys my detailed review and the pros and cons of this new model. What is going on guys, Hess here from CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys are trying to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and cover the pros and cons of the brand new model from Adidas known as the Profier. And just so you guys know, this is not a paid video. I did not get gifted a pair of shoes. I bought these for full retail and I wanted to give you guys my honest thoughts about the model. Before we get into the pros and cons, let's take a quick look at the overview of the shoe. Adidas says that the Profier is a futuristic sneaker that tests the limits of street style and these men's shoes launched the next era of streetwear with an unexpected look fueled by a strong Adidas identity, enhanced by raw edge details and embroidery. They feature a knit upper with small pops of red to create a melange effect, which is basically just a mixture of colors. The knit upper features engineered zones for adaptive fit and premium natural feel. It features a synthetic suede three stripes for the lockdown, has an embroidered heel tab, and features a raw edge leather heel cage. And these feature a polyurethane midsole and a rubber outsole. There's also a full length utility strap on the tongue, which is a very interesting feature that I did not recognize from the pictures. So that's a general overview of the shoe. Let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons. The first pro in my opinion is that it's a really stylish shoe. It has really aggressive lines. I like that the overall design is a little bit exaggerated, but it kind of reminds me of like a Lamborghini or something like that where it's extra extra aggressive and it adds a lot of dynamic to the shoe another pro is that this shoe does fit true to size in my opinion and that it is wide foot friendly something that i really like about adidas is they do have a lot of wide foot friendly options with their models because of this giant midsole it is definitely easier to fit wide feet in the shoe the shoe felt significant on your feet. It felt supportive where it needed to be. And the shoe is breathable, but it's not so thin that you could feel the wind gust right by your foot. It has a mix of nice materials for the price range of $120. I like that they use a little bit of leather, embroidery, suede. I also like that they reinforced areas on the upper. The neoprene liner is a plus and the traction is overall pretty good. I also like that Adidas has geared another model to the lifestyle segment. The shoe also features an attached tongue, which is hit and miss amongst consumers. Sometimes it's nice to have, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit more freedom, but when you do have it attached, it means it's not gonna flop around to the left or right. That's pretty much it for the pros. Let's go ahead and transition to the cons. The first con is without a doubt the weight of the shoe. It looks like it's gonna be light, but when you get these things in hand, these are some literal bricks. If I break out the scale, you're gonna see a one pound, two ounces almost, and this is a size 9.5 versus other models that you guys may know the alpha bounce is only 11.7 ounces the pure boost is under 10 ounces the 9317 is 12 ounces the ultra boost is 10 and the yeezys are roughly 12 ounces as well just a quick plug on these i'll link them in the description i think you can get these for 75 bucks still which is an absolute steal for what you get on this shoe so you probably get my point and that was the biggest turnoff to me on the shoe because they were so darn heavy so another con that I wanted to mention is these don't have boost, they don't have cloud foam, they don't have bounce. It's its own entity of cushioning, which is kind of odd because Adidas already has like three different trademarked cushioning systems and they didn't use any of them in this. And maybe this midsole is like Adidas bounce, it's just not marketed as such. It was just an odd choice and something that kind of threw me off. Maybe they wanted to go with something singular and not um, uniform with all of the different boost models that are out there currently and all the different bounce models. So maybe that was their reasoning for it, but an odd choice in my opinion. So I have to say that the utility strap, although it looks kind of cool on the shoe, is kind of a con in my opinion. This definitely does not play well when you have ankle socks on, which is something that I wear pretty much every single day. I don't like the fact that this rubs on your foot. It's very coarse and not comfortable at all because of that. I know the solution could be just obviously don't wear ankle socks, but for those that do, this is gonna be a nuisance. As I mentioned already, sometimes the attached tongue is a pro, sometimes it is a con. It depends on your preference of the shoe, but if you like attached tongues, good. If you don't like attached tongues, this would be a con. Next up, we have this crazy little shark fin on the back of the shoe, and honestly, I just don't get it. It really doesn't add too much to the shoe. I get that this is supposed to be a heel counter, but it really kind of clashes with the pull tab in my opinion. It just is kind of unnecessary. And then also the leather material used on this heel section is really, really cheap. I mean, this is like Jordan Retro 2015 cheap, like just not very good at all. Some will also mention it, but this is not prime knit. It's like a circle knit or whatever you want to call it, but it is not prime knit. I don't actually mind it. It's actually really soft and it's thicker than some prime knit out there. So I actually uh, like this knit, but some might say it's a con because it's not 
actually called prime knit. Another potential con for consumers out there is this protruding sort of heel section. It is definitely super big and it sticks out quite a ways towards the back section of the shoe and that might get caught on things here and there. I had a lot of problems on a 9317s because this section right here got stuck and uh, got dirty quite easily in comparison to the rest. It looks like they corrected that a little bit on this model, but it's probably something worth noting. And the last thing that people may or may not like about the shoe is those weird spiky bumps on the shoe. It doesn't add anything to the shoe really, except for a little odd dynamic, and some might not like what it offers because of those little bumpy things everywhere. I kind of like it though. It definitely sets the shoe apart from some of the other ones on the market. So that's it for my pro and con list. If you guys have any other ones you guys would like to add, please leave a comment in the comment section and let other people know what you like or dislike about this model. So final thoughts on the shoe. Is this worth buying or not? It honestly depends on you as the consumer. I know I say this a lot, but it's really, really relant. If you can afford the shoe and you like to have some extras and, and you want to add another pair of Adidas branded sneakers in your collection, then this is a great option for only $120 and it definitely is different than some of the other looking models on the market. However, if you only had $120 to spend on one pair of shoes for the entire year, would this be the one I would buy? Probably not. There's so many other good options on the market. And with the hype of the Adidas Boost shoes coming down, I mean, I posted the Adidas Ultra Boost on sale for $126, which is a shoe that retails at $180 and they had it as low as $126. So for six more dollars, you can get an Ultra Boost versus this shoe. And again, if you can only afford one shoe, then the Ultra Boost would probably be the way to go versus this. Also, you have some other options out there on sale, like you can get these for less than $100. Overall, the Pure Boost is a great model, and it's just one that doesn't get a lot of hype, but this is definitely one that could go into rotation daily, and you'd be very, very comfortable. Alternatively, I posted these for as low as $40. The Adidas Alpha Bounce, which is super slept on, and they retailed, I think, at $110, $120. Like, if you had to choose one of these two, I really like the Alpha Bounce better. I like that it has bounce, and I like the uh, overall look of this shoe better. It's a little bit simpler, it's a little bit cleaner, but if you have all those shoes already and you want some extra, this is a great shoe to own. Personally though, I would like to see the Profier in a boost form. Having a crazy big boost midsole like this would be awesome, and um, they can make a premium version of this, and it would be fun to see. It would kind of be like a newer version of the 9317, which is a shoe that this colorway generated a ton of hype, and then everything else kind of died down after that. But this is still a really comfortable shoe for myself. I love this model. It's super relaxed. It's crazy, crazy cushiony. And you can see like the midsole is bigger on the Pro Fear than on the 9317. So imagine this being Boost instead. I think that that would be crazy. It would also make the shoe much, much lighter. I think that would be a cool option for that model. But that is the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my pro and con review. And if you guys did like the video, please hit the thumbs up button and show your support on the video. If you guys want to purchase the Profier, check the link in the description. Or if you want to purchase any of the other Adidas shoes, I'll try to link them as well. Thank you again for watching. If you guys want to see more pro and con videos, check my channel. If you guys want to see some of my top five videos, check the link on the screen. But thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace, guys.